Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to the vlog. It is Wednesday. I had to think about what day it was because we have been at my mom's in Maryland for like six days and we just got back yesterday. And I don't know if I've said this before, but whenever we travel to my mother's, we always drive. Um, and it's about an eight and a half slash nine hour drive. And so we don't do that all in one day because I can't be bothered. I've done it. A bunch of times and I just it's not the vibe so we stay in New Jersey that's about halfway um, overnight and then we continue so we do four hours and four hours that's totally manageable um, so it but the only the caveat is it does take us two hours to two days to travel to my mother's but um, anyway she was fine I didn't want to like vlog when I was there she had broken her shoulder she like fell in the hallway in early October broke her shoulder and is now probably gonna have to get surgery on it which sucks but I went there to like visit her because she was supposed to visit me but then the shoulder broken thing happened so uh, we did a little reversing and I like cleaned up the house we like cleaned out her freezer we did a you know I did some laundry we bonded it was good times um, hubby went with me and Clover and we just had like a not like a relaxing I mean I guess it was sort of relaxing but it was more like a caretaking trip and now we're back. I didn't practice the entire time I was there. I didn't look at music. So I'm feeling a little behind today, but we're doing a huge, I'm doing a huge catch up today. So things I did before I turn on the camera. I paid, uh, Service Master actually like invoiced us from um, what, what the insurance didn't pay for. And so I paid that. We got that bill while I was gone, which was, uh -huh. and then um, I dealt with Clover's health insurance. I still have some Clover stuff to do. Maybe I'll take you along with that. And I uh, did the procedural recall stuff that I had to do with my heater that was recalled. I don't know if I told you, but my heater that I bought from Jovi, and I love Jovi products. I love Jovi products, but it was recalled. And it's a heater, so it was like there was a burn hazard. So I was like, fine, I will take part in the recall. So I guess I'm going to get a refund as soon as they process my recall. But in order to do the whole thing, they were like, cut the cord right on the back of it. Show us the um, serial number and the model number and write today's date on it and take a picture and make sure it's clear. It was like so complicated. So I did that. And... I cleaned out the fridge, went to Whole Foods to pick up like basics like milk, broccoli. Um, what else did I get at Whole Foods? Some eggs, but we're getting more eggs on Friday. But anyway, we're gonna make eggs for maybe like breakfast tomorrow. So we'll, we'll, we'll cook up eight eggs before Friday. It's Wednesday, believe me, we will cook up eight eggs before Friday. Um, and so I think I still have two Clover things to do. And then I scheduled my live streams for K-Daisy. We've been so productive today. <laughs> anyway, tonight is cantata singers. We're doing a little bit of Christmas music. Maybe we will, I'll show you a little bit of that if it's, if it's not awkward. But um, I am so excited to be the soprano soloist in our Bach cantata. I'm like very, very thrilled because this is a really special story. So when, uh, like maybe... I must have been like 30 and I was just started like singing again like just started because I quit for maybe seven years eight years and I was decided out you know I want to give it a try again so I started studying with um, a very like popular tenor around town and he was singing at Emmanuel where I wanted to sing because Emmanuel church is like the place to sing if you are like our into early music and you like Bach and all that stuff. And so um, he s invited me or like got me into this master class at Emmanuel Church with John Harbison. And if you don't know, if you're not a f like a music person, John, Har John Harbison is a local person, but he is like a, like like famous, I guess, um, because he wrote a really popular opera called, and I don't want to get this wrong, but he wrote The Great Gatsby, and I think it got a Pulitzer, I want to say, and it had Don Upshaw in it. It was like, so, you know, and John Harbison is like, I think, like a big wig at Emmanuel Church, and he's like really nice, like sweetheart, like just, I, I love John Harbison, and I, I actually really like 
and this is not like a like a suck up or anything but I love John Harbison's music like I love I love it I love singing it I love it it's so good anyway that's beside the point it was a Bach masterclass right and I just started singing again and he's like you should you know it's it's gonna have um oboe and some other people playing obligato instruments now if you don't know what that means I'll, I'll say that to you in Bach arias usually there is like a you know, singer and either like orchestral orchestral accompaniment um, or a orchestral accompaniment and or just the bass part and an obligato instrument that means like the it's like a duet partner um, with you in your aria and this happened to be like an oboe aria and he's like you should sing this one you should learn this one it's with oboe and it's pretty and you you would sing it well and so I learned it and it's from cantata number one now cantatas are not they're not in order of the, the like the order they were written they're just it's just a cat categorizing order um but it was really special because I sang the aria in the master class and the oboist who I got to work with is one of the best oboists in town and it was like a really special experience for me like here I am like young Kay and I am you know just learning being like a singer and I get to work with this amazing oboe player and it was just like really special and I get to sing it again 17 years later and it's with the same oboist shut up I like I could shut up not the full circle moment not anyway so special so I'm really 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 excited that's so special um I hope that we work together well again um but I her playing is like off the chain spectacular every time I hear her do a solo I'm like like magic coming out of the instrument I don't know how she does it anyway so that's coming up so I'm gonna sit and oh my goodness so I have to sit and uh, sort of make some markings in my music we're not doing that tonight tonight is all the core stuff but it does feel good to do some Christmas music even though well I, you know what I'm in the Christmas spirit and I'm work I'm still working on the Messiah stuff for uh, we're doing two messiahs this year and I just found out I'm actually really really happy I just found out the uh, I got like the list of the other people uh, in soloing in the solo the um, messiah on the 15th and I I'm very excited because I know the bass soloist super excited to work with them and the tenor soloist is somebody I haven't worked with in forever and I'm so excited. It's Jason Wang and Jason was on MasterChef like seven years ago and it was so weird to see my friend on TV. So I'm so excited to be on the quartet with Jason. I do feel sometimes I do get that little imposter syndrome where I'm like I see all I see the names you know on the list and I'm like cool 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 and then there's me what am I doing there? <laughs> I guess I'm there. Anyway, so that is what's happening. Um, and it is unseasonably warm here in Boston. And it's messing, mess, messing with stuff. So I'm going to maybe do some nebulizer, a little nutty pot, a little moment. And just, oh my gosh, 3.30. I have like three hours until I have to leave for rehearsal. So that is the catch up. I got to do the clover stuff. I'll do that next.
Welcome back. Um, I was in Boston this morning at uh, Macy's as a little show with probably some B-roll that happens before this because I needed to do some shopping for concert wear because I don't have any concert wear. So I was like, I'll just go to Macy's and see what they have. Um, and it was like the first time I've been out in a while, like out with people shopping in a department store and it felt weird but felt fun fun and i had fun so i bought this like little set also i wasn't planning on getting this but i saw it there and i was like i have to get it it's knit and it's a little hoodie and it comes with a little pants little pants isn't that cute it's so cozy so i was like i'll just put it on right away and i got another one i got a different one it came with like a little sweater. This one's extra small, so this one should probably fit a little better. Um, and then the pants that go with. And I have to tell you, these, this is not what I was looking for. I'm no regrets. I think they were, let's see, one was $29.99 and one was $35. So they were, I think for me, a pretty good price. And I have to say that I think it is important that I shop in the junior section for some things. <laughs> I just don't fit um, standard women's sizes. Uh, it's just something I'm gonna have to accept. So I went to like the petite section of the formal wear, like the evening wear to get some concert stuff. And I didn't really find any long dresses that were gonna work for me. A, because all of the petite sizes were like size eight and up. I need like four or something smaller. And um, a lot of the standard sizes that did come in this, the small size that I need are not petite and I'm not gonna have it tailored. I'm just not. I mean, if I really want the dress bad enough, maybe I'll think about employing a tailor, but for now, I just, I can't be part of that. I really wish that eshotkey.com never, like went out of business. I'm so sad about that. If eshatkey.com was still a thing, I would be ordering hundreds of dollars of gowns from eshatkey, but they're gone now. They're not technically gone, but they're gone. Do not order from eshatkey.com. You will get your money stolen. They have 89 of my American dollars. I will not get it back. It's too, it's been too long. Um, but cause I got two I got two out of the three things I ordered when I ordered from them in 2023. So, 2023? Might have been 2024. I might have ordered them in January 2024. I think that's the case. And I only got two of the pieces. One of the pieces never arrived, and I never heard from anybody at each house. Well, I asked, and then they were like, it's a fabric issue, which they told everybody. And it wasn't anybody, any, any sorry, anyway, that is the reason why I don't have like petite dresses. I will probably need to end up having custom things made because I am small. And I, I, I hate admitting that, but like I'm not a normal like standard size. I'm like a, a, almost a child size. So I need to get things that fit, okay? So the first thing I got for concert season was this cute little, can you tell what it is? It's a little like jacket, but it's sheer, black, sheer. So this can go on top of, you know, some like a tank top or nice little camisole or whatever and add some elegance. Oh, there it untied. Add some elegance to your look. And it's from the designer Adriana Papel and it's extra small. Um, and this worked really, this was beautiful. It was exactly what I was looking for. I love how sheer it is and I love the little sleeve on it. So cute. Um, and it was a pretty good price. This one was 65 retail and I got it sale 45.50. So that was so good. I wasn't, I was like not expecting that, but they were having a sale, which I was so excited about. So we're going to add this to the concert repertoire. She's so cute. And I did tie it. It's just, just, you need basics like this on stage. So I can wear this with like regular coral wear or like if I'm feeling, if I need to be a diva, I will, I can pair this with a skirt, which I'm thinking about doing. Um, and reason I was out shopping is because I'm not, I have, in my singing career, I have not been prepared to be a diva at any moment. Like solo stuff, I've done a couple of times. I did, I was like for a requiem 
a couple of years ago, I did the soprano solo and I wasn't there for anything else. And but but typically my career has been I sing in the ensemble. Maybe I might step out to sing a solo at some point, but I I'm in the ensemble and I wear black and that is my role. Or I've been on stage on opera and I'm in costume. And so I haven't really had a reason to buy things like this. Um, I've had things like this. I gave them a lot away um, after I was pretty much resigned to not needing it. And now I regret it because now I need it, but we're, it's okay. We're starting from scratch. And I didn't find any dresses, but I did find a skirt, which I think is supposed to be a T-length skirt, but on me, it's a full skirt. So here it is, it's like red flowers on it. And when I tried it on, there's a front and a back. I think it's two different lengths. So it's a little longer in the back. I don't know if you can tell. A little longer in the back than it is in the front. This is again, uh, this is from Muse. And it was on sale for, it was, um, it's $89 retail, but I paid $69.30. And as you put it on, it's a size two. So it, it could fit a little better, but it's fine, it'll fit. So yeah, you can see that it's shorter in the in the front than it is in the back. There's a little bit of it. It's got a little bit of a train. And if I want, I can have it be like a little bit lower on my hips. I love this. I think it's so pretty. And um, I think what would be really fun is if I had a little tiny petticoat on underneath it. I do have a petticoat, but I think the petticoat is too long for this. I think I would get a shorter one, make this a little poofier. And I think that this with like cute little top, maybe that little guy, cute outfit. So anyway, these are my two purchases from Macy's along with the little sweater, sweater dealio I have. This didn't wrinkle at all, wow. Um, so I guess I was sort of successful at Macy's. This is my attempt at an eggnog latte, eggnog cappuccino, eggnog cappuccino. Because I was going, I was walking through Boston Common and I was thinking, what is eggnog flavor? And I came up with the conclusion that it's mainly custardy with like a nutmeg and cinnamon sweet flavor. So I don't, I didn't want to use egg in this. Um, and since I'm low carb, I can't really have like the sugary eggnog, but maybe I'll try to pick up some eggnog like fl flavor. I don't know. Anyway, this is, it's decent. It's almost there. You know what it could probably use is the teeniest, tiniest bit of either like mascarpone or cream cheese. Ooh, my girl lights just went off. To add a little bit of that like missing eggy flavor. What is eggy flavor? Like what is the depth of flavor of like egg white, egg yolk? I just don't want to use egg. I think that's gross. But anyway, that is, that is the thing. I'm looking at my plants. My plants need a lot of help today. Like they are like, K, okay, please water us. Especially this Calathea right here. She is dying. Normally this Calathea Freddy does really well, but I noticed the leaves are curling just the tiniest bit. Um, and so that means it's thirsty. If you ever have any of these uh, prayer plants, uh, family Calathea, well, I think they're called Gapertia now, but Calatheas, uh, Tananthi and Maranta, they all do this leaf curling thing to mean that they are thirsty or that they are in too high a light. And this one's definitely thirsty. So I'm going to give her some water as soon as I get done talking to you. It's almost Thanksgiving and I'm pre busy preparing my Thanksgiving menu. My husband and I had our 10 year anniversary. We didn't really do anything. We are, because it was so close to Thanksgiving, we are just like, we'll have an amazing Thanksgiving. And so I am as my anniversary gift to him, because he's already given me a couple of things, I am making a, a fabulous Thanksgiving meal, which is probably going to be like three days of work, but I think it'll be worth it. He is, the way to his heart is through his stomach. He is very like into, like if you wanna be his best friend, give him something yummy to eat. So we're gonna do that. And because I dislike turkey so much, I think we're just gonna do like slow roast chicken with all the fixings and sides. I think that turkey is an inferior protein. I know that like it's traditional and all that. And we have like so many wild turkeys here in Massachusetts. Like I see wild turkeys on my street all the time. It's never not weird when I see them. It's not like whenever I see, and I've lived here for probably 30 years now. I'm saying that a lot is so upsetting. But anyway, I've lived here for so long and I still see like wild turkeys on the street and it's never not weird. I'm never like, Oh, well that's normal. No, it's never not weird 
but I think turkey is dry and it doesn't taste like much. I mean, it tastes like turkey and I don't mind it like in a soup or on a sandwich, but I don't want it to be the main star of my Thanksgiving meal. Chicken is better, so I'm making a chicken and I'm always gonna get chicken. And I'm offended by the cost of turkey. I was like first thinking, I was like, oh, I don't wanna make a whole turkey because that's stupid. Well, I'll just get a chicken, or sorry, a turkey breast. And I was at the Whole Foods and oh my God, a turkey breast is $44, $45? No ma'am, no ma'am, $44? Isn't a chicken like, $20? Listen, maybe even less than that. Depends on where you go. I am not, it's not happening. It's over, Johnny. So I, we're, I'm also gonna make some stuffing. I'm gonna make an incredible salad. I cannot wait. Incredible salad. We're gonna do deviled eggs, um, fancy charcuterie, maybe some butternut squash soup, uh, I made this amazing macaroni and cheese with cauliflower instead of noodles last year. So good. Oh my God. Um, maybe some, something with like bacon. Scallops wrapped in bacon. I don't know. Something just fantastical. So we're going to do it. We're going to have some nice um, non-alcoholic cocktails and we're going to maybe play some sol some solitaire or uh, well, I, we can't play solitaire together. I guess we can play some Scrabble. I like Scrabble. Or we can play um, some Nintendo. So I think what that sounds for a nice Thanksgiving. We'll, you know, take over for a walk. It'll be really nice. Hopefully it'll be nice weather. So that's what's going on for the week. And I'm still really intensely practicing. I haven't filmed any of it. But <laughs> practicing for the Messiah performances, which I'm... I'm nervous about, but I'm just trying to let it, let it all go, all the stuff. And I was reflecting on how I've been talking to y'all about the whole struggle I've been having over the past five years with feeling like I don't know what I'm doing, feeling confident, feeling like an imposter, because I know that's really common. And one of the things I noticed the most when I was going through all of this therapy and like thinking about it, is that the inner dialogue, and I, I know not everyone has inner dialogue, but I feel like most people do, is that the inner dialogue that I was experiencing within my own brain was really freaking mean. Like a lot of the things I was saying were really mean or really harsh all the time. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't give yourself a, a harsh pep talk from time to time. I think from time to time it's really helpful. But a lot of it was just became like a really ruminative, mean, bullying inner voice. And part of the way that I dealt with a lot of this mean inner self talk is by journaling. I would, uh, when I was, there was a whole period of time where I was waiting for audition results and I was nervous. So I, every morning I journaled about my feelings regarding it and it kind of helped get it out. And I would just, instead of ruminating and like stewing in my emotions and a lot of the, the main, I noticed the, the main emotion that was making me experience the intense imposter syndrome was fear. I was very afraid. I was afraid of being seen. I was afraid of not being seen. I was afraid of being left behind. I was afraid of people finding out that I was a fraud. I was afraid I was afraid of all kinds of things. It's very fear-based. And I noticed that there were a lot of um, references to fear in my journal entries and sadness. And I, I did pay for um, an app called Morning Pages, which if you can afford it, I will highly, like, highly recommend it because you can type into morning pages, you know, you can just pfft, spit out all of your feelings or whatever, just un, uncensored. And it will kind of amalgamate for you what is going on in your text. Like, are you feeling fear, afraid? Are you sad? Are you happy? Are you feeling joyful? Are you feeling grateful? And how much percentage of, of that is your text? How many positive words you used? And blah, blah, blah. And... 
I noticed that, I noticed this morning, because I heard it out loud, and I'm going to give you a tip if you are talking to yourself very harshly and you want to stop and you want to be kind to yourself because that's easy to say, right? People are like, oh my gosh, be, be kind to yourself. You, you know, everybody's out here trying to be mean, be bullies and whatever, especially on the internet. You know, you should be kind to yourself, be kind to yourself. That's really not easily done. It's, it's easily said, but it's not easily done. Um, and I was listening to um, Huberman po podcast this morning and I realized that I had done something subconsciously that they had said out loud to do if you want to quiet your inner critic or um, at least soften your inner critic, right? Because I think that my inner critic deserves to be there. She's important. But I don't need her to be a bitch. I need her to be like really helpful. So the one thing I did that changed everything, and I beg of you to try this if you are struggling with negative self-talk, is to continue talking to yourself, but you need to use your own name, right? And that sounds really weird, but it allows you to detach from yourself a little bit and talk to yourself more objectively. Because when you use your name, you are now talking to you, but like almost separate from you. And you tend to say things and use language in ways that you would talk to other people. Because if I'm talking to like Linda, let's say if Linda's in the room and Linda's asking me for advice or whatever, I'm going to be nice to Linda because objectively, I'm a, I think I'm a nice person. And I think most people are nice people. They're not going to be mean and nasty to other people. So when I would have conversations with myself and I would be practicing and like, you know, weird sounds would come out or I was frustrated that I couldn't um, produce what I wanted to produce. I'm like, okay, all right, okay, how are we going to solve this? What are you going to do right now? Um, let's figure out a way to, to get this going instead of, oh my God, I can't do it. I am so terrible. I'm a terrible singer. You can't be as rude to you as separate from you as you can with your own inner voice, not using your name. So you use the words, you use your name when you talk to yourself and you use the word you. you say, what are you gonna do now? How can you help? How can you make this better? And I, whenever I talk to myself, I go, okay, hey, what are you gonna do? Because I wanna be, I feel like now, and I didn't have this for the longest time, that I have my, I've sort of had to become my own big sister I never had a big sister. I didn't have any siblings at all. So I'm like only child imagining what a big sister would be, an ideal big sister would be like, who is kind to me, but, and not coddling, you know, like a really um, objective kind of big sistering, not parenting, because I had, I had parenting, but big sistering. And I, it was like what I didn't get as a young person, um, you know, I got parented, but I never really got mentored by a big sister. And now that I'm older, the, the little, little K, I always refer to her as little K because she's still in there, needs help from big sister K, who I think I am now. And little K I feel like is that really like lizard brain, like act on impulse, hard on herself kind of mentality, right? Because that's what kind of grew up. It's very reactive. And I think that you start to trust that part of your personality, your part of your, your psyche. You trust that lizard brain, you know, and, and you're practicing, you're doing your art, you're writing, and you go, oh, it's terrible, it's bad. I'm bad. I am so, I'll, I'll never be, I'll, I'll never get into that group that I want to sing with so bad. And in stepping outside myself and allowing my big sister, my imaginary big sister, to step in and mentor me instead of let little K talk herself through whatever she needs to talk herself through because little K doesn't really know anything, right? Like your former younger self, when you're still going through life, doesn't have any life experience. And 
might think if if you don't know how to do something the first time that yeah you, maybe you feel stupid or you feel like you can't do anything or you feel incompetent you have to step in and correct the the negative feelings the bad feelings but you have to do it objectively so you have to use your own name because you would never talk to somebody the way that you would talk to yourself uncensored like I would never go up to somebody in the street and be like, you suck. But you, I feel like we all talk to ourselves freely like this inside our own brains, which is it, like it, crazy to me. Well, it's not crazy. It's just part of humaning. And so in hearing that said out loud on this podcast this morning, I'm like, oh my God, that is exactly what happened. Like in a couple of years, I kind of transformed the way that I thought about my own stuff and I can step outside and whenever I'm struggling with something instead of saying instead of reacting and going oh my gosh I'm stupid and crazy and I do still have those thoughts that go through my mind I look at those and instead big sister Kay steps in and says it looks like you're having a hard time Kay what are you gonna do how can we make this easier for you and it calms everything down and it makes me it puts me in work mode and takes me out of reactionary emotion mode. And it's been a game changer. So I just talked a lot about a weird psychologic trick that I did to myself last year and the year before. I mean, I'm listen, I'm not going to pretend like getting wins is not important because it is. A lot of the reasons I felt like an imposter is because... I had some things happen to me that were objectively losses um, and some of them were fair and some of them were unfair, but they were all happening and I felt because of the result of all of these like pieces that were falling into place that I either must be exceptionally special in a bad way or I was pretending to be something that I wasn't. And I said out loud to someone, and this is just a professional thing, I'm like, I think that I'm not going to feel much different if I don't get any wins. Because you're gonna need, you, you need to get wins in order to stay motivated, right? If you keep, if you're playing a game and you keep losing, you're gonna stop playing the game eventually. You're gonna be like, Fuck this, I'm out. After I got a couple of, of really important wins, and in going through the wins, I still can point the ones where like I thought things were manipulated. I thought like somebody's you know put in a good word for me, or some some somebody some uh, fairy godmother is out there like promoting my singing and. It must be something's happening behind the scenes that's like not sinister, but it's it's not me doing the work. I genuinely had that thought last year. <laughs> I was like, who is out there doing? And I was I almost I almost messaged one of my colleagues and was like, did you um, say something to get me an audition in X, Y and Z? Um, but I didn't do that because I just wanted to float, go with the flow. So after I got some wins. I feel a lot more confident, but I also think that talking to myself in a very objective manner and in a very compassionate way when I needed it is very helpful. And talking to yourself in an affectionate way or a compassionate way doesn't mean you are bullshitting yourself. It doesn't mean you are gassing yourself up when I mean you I mean there are times when you should gas yourself up but it's mostly being neutral and objective and that takes all the emotion out of it because I feel like most of the the difficulty in imposter syndrome and low confidence in um, feeling bad about yourself comes from um, the intensity of the emotion around all of the things that you are feeling and experiencing and if you turn the dial down a little bit, it can help you sort of move out of it. And that was what I needed. I, I, I've always been a really emotional person, 
Um, and there are t there's a time and a place for it, right? Like my friends and family, like there's a time and a place to be emotional and to um, wear your heart on your sleeve and to let your feelings guide you. But sometimes it's important to step out of yourself and be more of a, like a self guide, like a coach. And um, I thought I would talk about that today. Because I just think that if, if one person hears it and gets out of their own way, I'm so happy because I have been stepping it in front of myself for so many years and it's, I mean, you're exactly where you need to be at any given time, but like the, the time, I mourn for the time that I have been stepping in, in my, in front of my own path and just standing there. <laughs> but there's nothing I can do about it. The time is, is past, but I can still feel bad about it. Um, because all feelings are functional. So I will probably end the vlog here and we'll come back with a fun Thanksgiving vlog. We are abutting a, a vlog mess. So um, I'm hoping that I will have, I will not like get the content too close to everything. I'm very excited about Christmas decorating, Christmas decorating, I can't even say it. I'm very excited about Christmas decorating, you don't even know. Like you don't even know. I just, I want to do it like last week. I wanted to do it last week, but I'm like, oh, save it for Vlogmas, save it for Vlogmas vibes. But girl, I just, all I want to do is get the damn trees out and the, and my mom gave me some ornaments that she got from Germany that are still in the packaging. Now we lived in Germany between like 1982 and like 85 or something. Still in the packaging. I can't wait to show this to you guys. All right. I hope you enjoyed the day's vlog. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>